The story begins with a former detective named Jacob Cannons arriving in London from New York City. He's there to identify his daughter, Kimberly, and her husband, Thomas, who were brutally killed during their honeymoon. Shockingly, their bodies are horrifyingly mutilated. Thomas with a severed arm in his mouth, Kimberly with both arms missing below her elbows, and her eyes forced open. Jacob is even more shocked when he finds out that a postcard was sent to a journalist seven days before the murder. Meanwhile, we see a newlywed couple named Mac and Sylvia riding a train across Europe. They're soon approached by a strange man with tattoos who introduces himself as Peter. Peter tries to get to know them, but the couple appears to be bothered by him. After some time, Peter goes to buy a drink for the three of them, but when he returns, the couple's already gone and they've left a hat behind. Back in London, Jacob's grief becomes so all-consuming that he begins to drown himself in alcohol. One day, his divorced wife, Valerie, bursts into his apartment and throws the liquor bottles into the trash can to stop his downward spiral. Later, Jacob and Valerie discover that, before the death of their daughter and her husband, another newlywed couple was murdered in the same manner. But this incident took place in Madrid, with their lips severed. Likewise, a journalist in that city had also received a postcard before the crime. Later on, Jacob approaches the local police department and says he wants to investigate these killings. However, the officer denies him permission, urging Jacob to return to New York and grieve for his daughter instead. Still, Jacob's determined to find the perpetrator and states he won't rest until the murderer is caught. Following this, another murder takes place in Munich with a gruesome scene. A woman's lifeless body is found with her finger inserted into a man's stomach and the man bearing severed ears, while a pair of eyes hang from the ceiling. Immediately, Jacob travels to Munich and meets with another detective named Klaus Bulbitz, hoping to get the details about the recent killings. However, Klaus informs him that he can't share much information with him. Despite this, Klaus shows Jacob some crime scene photos, which Jacob captures on his phone. Then the two detectives seek the guidance of an art professor, who reveals that these murders are connected to some famous artworks. Meanwhile, a journalist named Desi in Stockholm receives another postcard about an upcoming murder, and news spreads across Europe. When Jacob learns about this, he heads to Stockholm to further investigate the case. Furthermore, he tracks down Desi and follows her around in the evening. Jacob tries to question her about the postcard she got, but Desi gets frightened by him and closes the door. Realizing the position he's in, Jacob leaves his contact information on her doorstep and leaves. Elsewhere in Stockholm, Peter's drinking in a bar when he notices Sylvia and Mac from a distance. He then approaches the couple and invites them to a drink. The couple's hesitant at first, but they don't want to ditch him again, so they go with him. While drinking, Peter questions why they abandoned him on the train, but they defend themselves by claiming they left a note. The next day, Desi investigates the murders on the internet. She discovers about Kimberly's death and realizes that Jacob is her father. Immediately, she approaches her boss and requests that she work on an article about Jacob, claiming that it'll be profitable. Later, Desi approaches Jacob and apologizes for not speaking with him yesterday since she had no idea he was the victim's father. Desi then shares with him the details of the postcard she received. She mentions the presence of three dots at the end of a sentence. Jacob claims that it was in prior postcards as well, implying that there will be a sequel and another murder will take place soon. Meanwhile, Peter takes Sylvia and Mac to a pub and introduces them to his wife, Nenki, who is a tattoo artist. When asked why she wasn't on the train with Peter, Nenki explains that she prefers to travel by plane. Nenki then invites Sylvia and Mac to join her and Peter on a private island. The very next day on the ferry, Peter returns Sylvia's hat, which she'd left on the train. However, Sylvia gives it back to Peter to keep as a present. Afterward, Jacob returns to Munich to meet with Detective Klaus, the only person who seems to understand and help him. With the Swedish police blocking him out of the investigation, Jacob seeks help from Klaus. Together, they examine security footage from the Munich Museum where the artwork was exhibited to find some clues. They do notice a couple there, but can't make out their faces since they're wearing hoodies. In Stockholm, the cops begin by inspecting the cameras of all museums in that city, as well as hotels and airlines. They're looking for a pair who's recently traveled to London, Munich, or Madrid. Soon after, they discover Peter and Nenki's profiles and suspect them of murder. The two arrived separately, one by train and the other by plane, which is highly suspicious. On the way to their apartment, the cops are informed that Jacob and Nenke attended an art school, so it makes sense that they're serial killers who replicate famous works of art with the victims of their bodies. But when they arrive at Peter's apartment, they find it empty. Following the leads, the cops proceed to the island where the couple went and are shocked to find Peter and his wife dead. Just then, Jacob discovers Sylvia's hat among the dead bodies and breaks down in tears as he realizes it belonged to his daughter. 
Following that, the Swedish police examine security footage from boats to the island and capture the faces of Mac and Sylvia. Later, when Mac and Sylvia prepare to leave their hotel, they find themselves cornered by a team of officers. The couple's arrested right away and the police interrogate them separately, but they manage to narrate the same story. Both Mac and Sylvia explain that they did accompany Peter and Nenke to the island, but left early. Sylvia shows them notebooks full of receipts proving she was in other places at the time of the crimes. Jacob doesn't believe the two because they have an answer and an alibi for everything, which seems to be well rehearsed. However, police claim that they can't jail them without evidence and that the only thing they can do is mark their passports, preventing them from leaving Stockholm. That evening, Jacob's stressed and contacts Valerie in New York to update her on the investigation. He claims that Sylvia and Mac appear to be ghosts because there's no record of them and they have no past. The next day, Valerie does some investigating and finds out that Mac's real name is Simon Haysmith, who is the son of Simon Haysmith Sr. Haysmith Sr. is currently behind bars for embezzling $300 million from his Wall Street clients. His scheme was so expertly executed that no evidence could be found against him. The breakthrough came when his son, Simon, exposed his father, claiming that he hated his father and wanted to see him destroyed. However, since Simon was only 15 at the time and a minor, this information was kept confidential to protect him. Meanwhile, Desi meets Jacob at a cafe and tells him that another couple has been discovered dead in Amsterdam, having been murdered between London and Munich. Just then, a person at a nearby table gets up and leaves the receipt behind. When Jacob notices this, he understands that Sylvia collects other people's receipts, which she uses as an alibi to get away. In the meantime, Sylvia is in a hotel when she recalls visiting a museum with her father and her younger brother as a child. The father teaches them about art, but also yells at them not to show any weakness. Later that evening at Desi's house, Jacob requests to use her computer for browsing. As she allows him, she steps away to use the bathroom. While on the computer, Jacob accidentally opens a file and realizes that Desi's working on an article about him. He assumes that she might be exploiting him for her gain and quickly leaves without a word. That night, Jacob heads to the hotel where Mac and Sylvia are staying. He's noticed by the patrol officer guarding the hotel, who immediately alerts the station. The Swedish police then call Jacob and inform him that he can't break into other people's rooms. At the same time, Mac and Sylvia use the elevator to escape while dressed as hotel employees. When Jacob arrives at their room, the police follow closely and discover two dead hotel staff inside. After this, Mac and Sylvia retrieve their Russian passports from a train station locker and leave while wearing wigs to cover their identity. Sometime later, Desi finds Jacob drinking in the street and apologizes for not telling him about the article. She says she has no plans to publish it, but Jacob claims he doesn't care anymore because the people responsible for his daughter's murder have already escaped. Back in New York, Valerie takes a daring step by breaking into Haysmith's abandoned house. However, she is caught by a curious neighbor who reveals that the house has been empty for years. The neighbor extends an invitation to Valerie for tea, and Valerie seizes the chance to find out about the owner. The woman discloses that Mr. Haysmith frequently mistreated Simon and his older sister Marina. He had a lovely Russian wife, but one day she killed herself, and the kids found her. After this incident, the father started taking the kids to art museums and forcing them in abusive ways to be better at everything. However, because of his torture and physical mistreatment, child protective authorities eventually took both of his children. The next day in Belgium, the cops find another dead couple. But this time, the victims are not newlyweds, but two grown men. Meanwhile, Desi shows Jacob the photo of the Amsterdam murders. He notices his grandmother's ring and is certain that the arm in the image belongs to his daughter. Horrified by this, he breaks down in tears and Desi comforts him to ease his pain. In New York, Valerie goes to meet Haysmith and quickly figures out what kind of a man he is and what type of parent he is to his children. The father keeps insulting his children and claims that because Simon and Marina were so inseparable, he had to instill good morals and discipline in them. Meanwhile, Desi and Jacob discuss Simon's desperate efforts to reunite with his sister many years ago, who had been placed in foster care. Suddenly, the realization hits Jacob and he understands that Simon's sister, Marina, is none other than Sylvia, and the two have been traveling Europe pretending to be a married couple. Afterward, the siblings are then seen in a hotel room planning their next move. Simon worries about what might happen to them and wishes they could put an end to it so they can resume their usual lives. However, Marina promises that she'll be by his side throughout the entire process and that their immoral crimes will ensure that fate for them. 
It appears that Marina and Simon's atrocities were an act of defiance against their strict father who taught them all about art. They recreate famous works of art using the bodies of their victims to express their wrath and need to be understood. Meanwhile, Jacob and Desi finally figure out a way to stop their crimes by letting their message be heard. Desi publishes a report about her interactions with Jacob and the man she perceived him to be during the investigation. She also carefully describes the murderer's intended message, claiming that they must have experienced severe mistreatment as children and that their sole purpose is to be understood. Upon reading the article, the siblings are happy and they find comfort in being understood. Marina then sends an email to Desi to thank her and also chooses her as their next victim. After that, the duo sends postcards to several cities with the message, We are reborn, and just one dot, signifying that this is their last murder. Next, we see that the siblings continue to stalk Jacob and Desi. They finally track the duo down on a snowy highway in Helsinki and cause a deliberate accident. As a result, Simon and Marina take Desi away, and Jacob gets unconscious. Sometime later, Jacob wakes up and requests a ride from a truck driver. Meanwhile, Desi awakens in Marina's arms, who tells her that she likes her. Desi pleads with them to let her go, but the siblings pull over by the side of the road to end her life. Now, Simon offers Desi a medication that will numb her pain completely, but Desi continues to resist. Just then, Jacob arrives at the scene and aims his gun at the two murderers. Marina taunts him, revealing how his daughter confided in them about her parents' divorce, but Jacob doesn't listen to her. Right then, Marina spots a knife nearby and intends to kill him, but before she can act on it, Jacob shoots Simon in the stomach. Marina screams in panic and drags Simon into the snow, declaring that they're meant to spend forever together. Tragically, Simon succumbs to his wound and breathes his last breath. In the aftermath, we see Jacob in the hospital, where Klaus comes to visit him. Jacob admits that he allowed Marina to escape, knowing she couldn't survive in the freezing snow for long. Klaus informs him that Simon and Marina had no blood relatives because they were both adoptive children. Jacob gets sad hearing this, since the couple could have got married and lived happily without murdering all those people, including his daughter. Finally, as the story comes to an end, we see an unknown caller speaking to Haysmith in prison, and it turns out that the caller is none other than Marina.